So what I'd like to do at this stage is I'd like to bring up uh, some of our principal software engineers who work on the Cirrus product and actually take you through a demo of all this stuff. So I'd like to bring up Phil Heckel and John Rowland. Thank you very much, Austin. Um, my name is Phil Heckel. I'm a principal engineer here at Datto. This is my fifth DattoCon, my second time at DattoCon London. I'm very glad to be back to show you a couple new features for our Cirrus and Alto line. With me today, John Rowland, principal engineer. This is his first DattoCon London. Um, so let's get started right away. We have a lot to show you. And the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to convert this desktop computer that John has down there into a Cirrus device using our new data utility stick. And to do that, we can simply go to downloads.data.com and we download the data utilities ISO and uh, we create a USB flash drive using Rufus or using Etcher or whatever tool you want to use. And then we just boot it. And from that moment on, you can manage everything from your own laptop by accessing this web interface that you see right here. So you don't have to be crammed in some loud server room to image your device. Um, so I'm doing just that. I'm booted into the data utilities stick right now and I'm using this presenter laptop to drive. So let's, now, uh, let's create that Cirrus, let's get started. And I'm selecting the Cirrus image app here now. And the first thing I have to do here is I have to pick the operating system drive that I want, uh, the drive that I want to put the operating system on, so the data OS. And it looks like I've got four drives here. I've got a uh, Kingston drive with 120 gigs, and I've got three two terabyte drives that I'm gonna use for storage. So I'm gonna select that and click next. And the next page allows me to choose my uh, RAID setup. So I have the option to choose between RAID 1, uh, no RAID, RAID 5, or RAID 6, depending on how many drives I have. Um, I have, again, I have four drives, um, but I'm only, uh, I only have three for storage, so I'm gonna use RAID 5 as suggested, um, and click Next. And that's really it. Uh, I can now review my choices. I've got my OS drive on SDA. I've got my storage drives on SDB, SDC, and SDD and I can begin imaging by start clicking the button. And because we're about to wipe the disk, I have to confirm this by typing format. So let me do that and click image my device. And that will start the installation. So this entire process is actually gonna take less than two minutes. Uh, all the steps that it's gonna run through are behind me on the screen, but just to quickly summarize, it first has to format and partition all the drives we saw earlier. Then it will download and install the Datto Cirrus operating system onto that Kingston drive on SDA that we picked to be our OS drive. And finally, it will create and configure our storage array in RAID 5 on those two terabyte Samsung drives. But once this is all finished, we'll have a fully capable Cirrus appliance. So that means you'll get all of the features that are existing in, in Cirrus, such as all support for all of our agents, that's Mac, Windows, of course, Linux, and agentless support. You'll get screenshots and advanced backup verification. You'll have all of our share functionality, so that's NAS, NAS Guard, and iSCSI shares. Plus you'll get all of the restore functionality, so you'll be able to restore all of your backups to, to either local verts, hybrid verts, ESX verts. You'll be able to export them as images, and of course you'll be able to do bare metal restores. Plus you'll get all of the new features we recently added and that we're continuing, continuing to add that, re that Austin just talked about. So that includes VHDX exports and Hyper-V support to extend our Windows integration. Plus, you'll, you'll get the fast failback and rescue agents that Austin was just talking about. So let me just take a look at uh, how many steps we've gone through. So right now, we're, we're actually installing the, the Datto Series operating system onto that OS drive. And oh, it just went through, and now it's configuring our, our RAID storage. Uh, these are the two longest steps that it'll take. Right after that, it's going to just finish, finish the setup and clean up any of the temporary files that it, it created during the whole installation process. So in just a couple seconds, we'll get to the, the imaging cleanup. And at, at the top, you can see that the finish and reboot um, button is, is grayed out for now. But in a couple seconds, it'll be available for us. And once that's there, uh, Phil is going to reboot the machine for us. And there it goes. So now that the, the machine is rebooting, we're going to pull up another screen uh, to, the, to the right over there. And right now, it's black because the machine is, is going down for the reboot. But when it comes back up, I'll be, I'll be booted into my new Cirrus, and we'll see the, the new Cirrus status screen. But while it's booting, I actually want to talk about our new data utility stick that we just used to create our Cirrus. In the past, we had a couple different flash drive utilities that each had their own specific function. We had an internal stick that we used to create new devices. We had Genesis and Cirrus 3 imaged that we also used to create new Cirruses. Plus, we had that BMR stick that you actually had to image right uh, directly from the Cirrus. 
Uh, in the case of a disaster, you don't want to be looking for a how-to article on creating the USB drive that you, that for the scenario you need to do. And you want it available and ready to use immediately. So we decided to put all of our applications into a self-updating flash drive. And we actually codenamed it internally as the one stick to rule them all. The idea is that you'll have all of the necessary tools on a single USB drive, just like the one I have up here. So I'm actually going to unplug it from the Cirrus, because we, we don't need it on the Cirrus anymore. But we will be getting back to it in just a couple minutes. So taking a look back, we've booted into our Cirrus, and we've been redirected to the de device registration page. So now that the device has rebooted, uh, let's enter our auth code in the registration wizard. And for this uh, demo, we've picked London 17 as the code. So let me enter that and click Next. And that brings us to the last page of the wizard and the last step before we can start using our Cirrus device. And on this page, I have to be like a slight bit creative. So I have to pick a name. So I'm going to pick Nova as a name here. And then I have to enter an administrator, user, and a password. And then go down to the time zones. We're in London here. So let me pick that. And then click Complete Registration. And uh, now that the device is registered, I can actually go ahead and add an agent to it. So let me go to the Protect page. And this is a very familiar flow, should be, uh, should be familiar to you. In this case, I'm backing up a Windows system uh, with our data Windows agent. So let me click Agent Based for now. Um, and I have to type in an IP or a host name. Austin just mentioned I should use the host name, but I'm, you know, habits. So I'm going to pick, uh, pick the IP address here. So I'm going to click Next. For this demo, it's OK to use the defaults. We're going to use the uh, local backup retention policies, all the defaults. Screenshots are good defaults. Uh, I don't need any notifications for this. So I'm going to click Next here and click Finish. And now the Cirrus and the agent are uh, pairing. And it'll couple, uh, take a couple of seconds for them to communicate, to exchange keys. Um, and once they're paired, we're actually redirected uh, to the Protect page, as we can see here. And I can start taking backups. So let me do that. Let me uh, click Start a Backup here. And while that first backup is going, uh, let's prepare the next part of our demo. Let's prepare the BMR, John. So we're about halfway through what we wanted to demo today. And the next step is going to take that USB or data utilities USB drive and boot into the, 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 the data utilities again. And we're going to use this backup that we're taking right now and restore it to the, the second machine I've got up here uh, using our BMR app. So, so earlier, we actually saw the, the data utility stick. Um, we actually, we have to, the first thing we have to do is boot into the USB storage device. And that'll get us to the data utilities. As I mentioned before, it's a self-updating stick. So anytime we have a new release, new software updates, it will, it will auto-update and persist those changes so you don't have to take those updates again. Uh, so in just in a couple seconds, you'll see, us, you'll see this, this screen quickly flash trying to check for updates. Uh, it doesn't have any updates. But right after that, we'll see the two applications we saw earlier. So there's the checking for updates. And it's loaded the application. Now this is the same screen we started the demo, of, the, started the demo with just now on my second machine over here. So I just want to take a look at the backup. Looks like we have a couple seconds left in the backup to go. But we, like Phil said, we can actually just start the BMR now. So I'm going to click into the BMR application and select my, the, the device we had just created, the, the Nova device. Let's type in the username and password that I know Phil used to create this. And we have the, the single Project Juno agent on this device. So I'm going to select that and click Next. And here's our, the only backup we've taken, the, the backup from 1027. So I'm going to select that. And I'm going to enable continuous mirroring. Phil's going to get to explaining what that is in just a couple of minutes. But I just want to note here that we're, we're enabling continuous mirroring right from this screen. I'm going to click Next. This is going to bring us to our, we have to select our partition scheme. I'm going to leave it as automatic partitioning for now uh, and move forward to our final review and confirm page. This will just summarize everything that it's going to do. So everything looks good here. I'm going to click Clone Data. And again, since we're wiping the disk, I'm going to type Format and click Confirm. And now this kicks off our BMR process. So the first thing it's doing right now, it's partitioning the disk the way that John set it up um, in, the, in the wizard. And once that's done, it'll start copying the backup data from the Cirrus device to our target machine. In our, in our case, that'll take about a minute or so. Obviously, depending on how much data, how much disk you have, that'll take um, a, a lot longer. One of the great features that we've also added to BMR is fast failback, or that continuous mirroring button that, uh, that John pressed. 
And, and that feature will transfer all new backups from your Sirius device to the target machine immediately after the backup has been taken. And this is going to save you a lot of time because the initial transfer obviously uh, can take a while, but the incrementals are much smaller and therefore the transfer is much faster. And to show you how that works, I'm going to take another backup. So let me go in here and click the start backup button again. And you'll see that backup being transferred to the target machine in just a minute. We've also made other improvements to BMR that you're definitely going to like. Um, we've made the process of BMR a lot faster by using the same Mercury technology in our BMR transfer, that, the one that you're seeing right now, um, that we're using in our backups. We've also added support for new hardware, um, which means you'll be able to BMR to a wider range of machines and components uh, without having to worry about drivers and, and such. Uh, for example, in this setup, we're using a 10 gig NIC uh, that is supported right out of the box. As we can see, the BMR process is already finished, uh, and we've been redirected to the mirroring page. Yep. So on this page, we can see all the backup points that have already been transferred. So we see the, the first backup Phil took at 1027 has already completed, and that second backup we took at 10, 1030 is currently being transferred. As Phil mentioned earlier, this demonstrates our fast failback feature, which you can continuously mirror the agent backups to a physical machine as they're coming in from the agent. That means every backup we take of that Project Juno agent, whether, if, whether it's a forced backup like Phil has been taking or, to, or if it's a backup uh, on, on a schedule, it will immediately be applied to this machine right over here. So it looks like our second backup has, has finished mirroring. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click Stop Mirroring. That just makes sure all of the, the correct points are synced, seeing if it needs to transfer any more points, points over. And then I can click Finish and Reboot. Uh, and before this goes down for the reboot, this is going to kick off our hardware independent restore process which is just the reason why restoring to new hardware is possible in the first place. It's going to detect the hardware that we're running on and inject any of the appropriate drivers that need to, that need to be uh, installed. But when this machine comes back up, it will boot into Windows, which demonstrates a successful restore of that original server. And while that machine's still rebooting, um, I want to recap everything we just did. We started our demo today not even having a Sirius device. We had a regular desktop computer. And we took that computer and we turned it into a Sirius using our data utility stick. So if you want a Sirius device with more RAM, with more hard drives, with all SSDs, you can build your own Sirius as a full, uh, and image it as a fully fledged Sirius device in just a few minutes, just like we did on stage here. The ISO is available today. You can go to downloads.data.com um, and you can uh, try it out tonight if you want to. We then took that Sirius device that we just created and we backed up a Windows server with our data Windows agent. Uh, you saw the speeds earlier. We had about like 200, 300 megabytes a second. Um, and that's because of our Mercury technology. We then restored that backup to yet another machine using our BMR. Again, that's new hardware support. You get the fast speeds uh, that Mercury has and you get um, the same utilities available on our data utilities ISO that you can download tonight. And then we, all, we mirrored all the changes of a second backup um, with our fast failback technology, which makes sure that your downtime is minimal. And all of that we did in just about 10 minutes. And that marks the end of the presentation. Thank you very much. And back to Austin. I, I'm not sure if you fully realized what just happened there as far as what you saw. We started this demo without even having a Cirrus. We created one out of thin air. We took a first backup, so that was a full backup of an entire Windows server. We then BMR'd it back and did incremental change. I look at if any other vendor attempted to do that, they simply couldn't. If Datto tried to do that a year ago, that same demo would have taken two hours. And we were able to get that done in 10 minutes. Like, it, it's just, the demo comes off so easy, I'm back there sweating bullets because it's just like I have some appreciation for the amount of technology involved to pull that trick off. And then we just created machines from scratch, copied stuff. It, it's as though somebody gave you a pile of dirt, you built a skyscraper, tore it down, and built another one. And like, we did that. And so this is just sort of one of the many pieces that make up Cirrus. And it gives you an idea of sort of what we continue to do on the technology. And then we make something that just a year ago would have been completely impossible by any other vendor look incredibly easy and simple. Uh, and I just, I'm incredibly proud
to be part of a company that can do that.